In our previous videos, we have created a user interface and also a behind the scenes activity for our Kotlin application. In this video, we are going to see how we can create a DTO in Kotlin. Here's a look at a specimen DTO that we created in Java. And you see we have several attributes to declared at the top, and then a whole series of getter and setters, and then a two string method. Some people think this is a little bit verbose. In the land of Kotlin, we can define a DTO in just one line. We can certainly add more to it over time, but we can start by defining it in one line. So let's remember these fields, specimen ID, plant ID, plant name, latitude, longitude, location, and description. And let's consider how we would use them in Kotlin. I'm going to come over to our application here, and I'll right click and I'll say new, uh, we'll say Kotlin file or class. And I'm going to call this one specimen DTO, just like so and we'll call it class and we'll choose OK. Add to get, that's fine. And now I'm going to say, I'm going to add a word here called data class. That essentially means that this class can represent some kind of DTO or some kind of noun. It also means that the class needs to have a constructor, as you can see here. So for the constructor, I simply put open curly, close curly right there. And now I have a default constructor, but I need to give it some attributes. So let's start by saying, var uh, plant name and then colon string that will tell us what type it is. We can say var and then we can say let's say latitude and then colon and we can say this one is a string as well and then comma var longitude colon string you could make an argument that that should be a double I've talked about floating point arithmetic before so I'll leave that up to you then we'll say uh, var, and then we'll say location. Or let's say, let's make the first one, yeah, location's fine. Location, colon string, comma, var, and I see a typo there, location. We'll do it just like so. Description, colon string. And now let's say var specimen ID, colon int, with a capital I, equals zero. Now what does that mean? That means if the, well, this is a constructor, so we need to pass in values for each of these when we construct an object of type specimen. But if I put in equals here, it means if the, if the caller does not pass in a value for specimen ID, go ahead and default it to zero. I can do the same thing for plant ID. Var plant ID colon int equals zero. So I can put a default value for anything that's here in this constructor signature. And that essentially makes overloading a bit easier. If you think about Java, there was no such thing as an optional parameter in a method call. But in Kotlin, we do have optional parameters. And if we have an optional parameter, it's customary to give it a default value if no value was passed in. So in other words, this constructor call that we see here can be used if the caller passes in all values, or it can be used if the caller only passes in the values that I'm highlighting here, or it can be used if the caller passes in the values that I'm highlighting here. So you see those last two are optional, and so there is a default value that's assigned. If we didn't have that concept of optional attributes, we were optional parameters, we would have to make a total of three different constructors to do what this one constructor is doing. Now also we have this word data. This word data means that each of these parameters that we see here is not just a parameter, but is also an attribute that we can assign things to if we make an object of this class specimen DTO. So let's save, let's go back to our GPS of plant, and let's try to make an attribute of type specimen DTO. So we'll save our specimen equals specimen DTO. Okay, now here's a trick. Notice I'm not passing anything in for specimen DTO. So it gives me a red line and it says, I have to pass in something for description, latitude, longitude, and plant name. See all of those non-optional attributes I have to pass a value in. So I could say description, and uh, well, that, let's see, that one it comes up and tells me that's plant name. So I could say plant name, just like so, and then comma, and then we can say latitude, we'll say 0, 0.0, and then we'll say uh, what comes next. Longitude, we'll say 0, 0.0. I like the way it gives me that kind of context-sensitive help. 
And final one, or one uh, location, Cincinnati. Okay. And do we have any more that we need? So description, a good plant. Okay. And at this point, we're in good shape. So you see, we've passed in a plant name, a latitude, longitude, location, and a description. So at this point, we're at a point where we compile, and we're also creating an object of type specimen DTO. So that's a first look at how to create a DTO in one line, but let's consider one thing. What if we don't know the plant name, the latitude, the longitude, the location, and the description? Because I kind of put in some dummy values here. What if those will come later? Well, in this case, we do want to make an alternate constructor, which we're cer certainly allowed to do. So inside the curly br braces, well, trust me, this is good enough. We could leave the specimen DTO like so. But if I do want to provide an empty constructor, what I do is inside the curly braces, I simply say constructor, open and close paren, and then colon this, and then I pass in values for each of these items that don't have a default. So for plant name, I might do double quote, double quote. For latitude, I might do 0.0. .0. And then for longitude, I might do 0.0, .0 again. For location, we'll just do empty string. And for description, we'll do empty string. The specimen ID and the plant ID, we don't have to worry about because we've provided default values up above. So we go ahead and we choose save. And now let's go back to GPS a plant and let's remove each of these items from the constructor. And you see now it doesn't complain. Now what we can do if we want to set these values individually is we can say specimen dot plant, uh, let's say dot uh, plant name equals, and then we'll say on the right side, we'll say act plant name dot text dot two string. So in other words, we'll kind of take away, we, we don't really need what we have up above there anymore because you see we're saying specimen, we're referring to that specimen object, and then we can say location equals, and then we can say act location dot text dot two string just like so okay and then finally we'll say specimen dot description equals and then we'll say edt description dot text dot two string and really once we've done that we no longer need these temporary variables we have up above as a matter of fact they're a little bit confusing just because i happen to give them the same name as the attributes down below that's a bit confusing so i could call it temp plant name so we can see this is actually a different variable but really we don't even need these anymore we can get rid of that entire unit because what we're doing here is we're creating a specimen object storing it into this variable and then we're taking the attributes of that specimen object. Remember what those attributes are. They're what we've declared up in this constructor line. And we're assigning them to the values that the user has typed in in our user interface. Now take a look at this. You see we're invoking plant name on our specimen variable, location on the specimen variable, description on the specimen variable. And uh, we could keep going. We could say specimen.latitude so on and so forth. We could keep going with that. Take a look at what all of these lines have in common and think about what could be changed to make them more efficient. Each one of them is invoking an attribute on the variable called specimen. So we have to preface each one with the specimen variable to say invoke this property on the specimen variable. But because we're doing that repeatedly, there's a construction that we can use in Kotlin to make things a bit more efficient, and that's with. So we say with, and then we pass in a variable name, or in other words, an object, a variable that's holding an object, with specimen, then we do open curly, and at the bottom of this, we do close curly. Now inside of this with statement, we can remove the specimen reference because that is assumed now. Now why is that assumed? Because when we wrap something in a with, and we provide a variable in the parentheses, then have an open curly, close curly, it assumes that any kind of method call or attribute reference we're doing is in reference to this variable that's up here. So in other words, having with specimen is the equivalent of having specimen dot to the left of each of these, we'll spell it correctly, to the left of each of these attributes. So that's handy if you're calling a method repeatedly or calling a series of method methods repeatedly on the same variable. Okay, so I'm going to snap a breakpoint, hit save, run this in the debugger, and let's see what we get. The emulator is up now, so I'll type in Eastern Redbud. Location, we'll say Sawyer Point Cincinnati. 
description. We'll say a beautiful specimen and slightly misspelled. And then I'll choose save. As soon as I choose save, our breakpoint should hit. So our breakpoint hits, I choose F8 to step over. You see in the variables tab, we now have a specimen DTO. And if I scroll up just a little bit here, you'll notice that the DTO currently has everything set to default. So description is empty string, latitude empty uh, is 0, 0.0, so on and so forth. Let's see what happens when I choose F8. Now, incidentally, when I choose F8, it executes this entire block as one line. So we're not able to see each of these interactions individually. But nonetheless, take a look at our specimen now. You see the specimen now says description, a beautiful specimen, location, Sawyer Point, Cincinnati, and plant name, Eastern Redbud. So you see we were able to use a couple of Kotlin shortcuts here to make a really easy DTO. We have our specimen DTO, which is essentially just two or three lines and two constructors. We've defined all of the attributes in that line, and we've defined the constructor. And uh, then we've used the with syntax to say, uh, invoke plant name, location, and description all on the specimen variable and assign to them the, the values that the user has entered in ACT plant name, ACT location, and a EDT description. We got these very easily by using the Kotlin Android extension, which allows us to easily pull in all of the widgets that we see on our layout. So, been quite a bit in this video. In our next series of videos, we're going to take a look at how to do some advanced things like populate our autocomplete text view. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.